Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the show that never ends. My name is Rod. Welcome to my channel. And this is Vinyl Tag 2021. And thanks to Andrew from Tales from the Crate for getting it started. Um, last year, there was like four, maybe five different ones going around. This is the only one I've seen this year. And I wanted to jump on it. Um, Andrew has some great questions. It's a great way to get to know people's taste in the VC, get to know other channels. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. And the first question he came up with is uh, a discovery in 2020. And for me, it was something my wife turned me on to. Miss Margot Price. Um, fantastic country singer. She's the real deal. Um, this is her third proper album. She started her career with Third Man Records, Jack White's label, Margot Price. Um, she told me about her one morning we were having coffee, and she was supposed to be on the Today Show or Good Morning America or one of those talk, uh, talking head shows. And she goes, you're going to like this lady. She's a, she's right up your alley. And I watched her perform. I cut off this album. It was a quarantine performance. Um, the band was all in separate rooms and blown away. Fantastic, fantastic artist. Great album. I went back and bought her, her first album. Um, fantastic performer. Really love her music. Margot Price. And that was question number one, a discovery in 2020. Let me get these questions going, if I can. Okay, second question, a quarantine buy. You know, everything I bought this year was a quarantine buy. That was, I mean, everything I bought, I think I bought offline. I think I went to our record store. Yeah, I did. I went one time. And it was the day after Christmas, I think, is the only time I got to go to a record store this year. So, everything I got this year was a quarantine buy. And I bought a lot this year. I was a bored, I was a bored guy. Um, antique shop where I worked were closed for a month, maybe six weeks. When we opened back up, man, business just wasn't there. Uh, luckily, I had enough side hustles selling antiques to other dealers to support myself, but... There was a lot of downtime. I did no picking this year as far as going out picking and flipping furniture and antiques. So I had a lot of spare time and let's do a lot of music. And I bought a lot of music. Um, a box set. Okay. And these are both going to be considered quarantine buys. Two box sets I bought. I bought this one back in March. Actually, my wife bought it for me. Bob Dylan's box set, quarantine by a VCLT from my wife, Bob Dylan, the mono years. Fantastic, fantastic box set. And this is one I just recently got uh, at the end of November. The story of the Grateful Dead. This box set is amazing. It weighs 14 pounds. I showed it when I got it, but I've never went back and really gotten into it. I mean, I've listened to it thoroughly, but I've never went back and made a video about it, and that's coming, because this is an amazing box set. And uh, thanks to Steve out there in the VC, he showed it, and Dylan showed it, and I had to have it, and I splurged. Fantastic stuff. Okay, um, a concept album. Um... I wrestled with this one because there are different types of albums I could have chose. And let's see, what did I go with? Pink Floyd, The Wall. It's all about the struggles over there in Europe after WW2, A Boy Growing Up. Um, the movie, The Wall, even though this is not a soundtrack, the movie came out after this. Uh, the movie really explains the album. Little boy growing up, finding himself, 
Uh, doesn't want to be another brick in the wall. Doesn't want to be one of the sheep. So there we go. That's my concept album. That also can be an answer, an answer for a, a question at the end. That particular album. An album or a band that changed directions. Um, that would be, to me, The Grateful Dead. Um, their first album, very psychedelic. Very, very cool album. Then they came out with this, Billy. Nevertheless, it's a great album. Fantastic album. But it leans more to the country roots and more to the folk sound. Um, a really big change up for them. And they weren't afraid to change gears, man. They had no problem. I was watching a, a video earlier this evening, Randy Weaver, Randall Weaver had, and saw about one of their albums where uh, it was like heavily influenced by John Coltrane. It didn't sound like jazz, but it had the, the switch ups and the progression of a jazz album. So the Grateful Dead could really change directions on any album. Kind of like David Bowie. We're not as drastic as Bowie, but no one did it like him. Nobody. A white label promo. I have a few still. This is Willie Nelson, white label promo, not for sale. And all of my years in radio, I've never, ever had them ask for one back. Even though some of the stickers say, you know, it has to be returned on demand to the record company. I've never seen that happen. The only time they ever ask for them back is like the Casey Kasem countdown. They would want those back. But that's a white label promo. A compilation album. I'm going with this record store day release from I think 2018, maybe 2019. Poppies. Uh, compilations are a great way to discover new artists. And this is a psych album. Some really cool psych. And I went back and bought two albums from two of the artists on here. Um, Buffy St. Marie. And there's uh, the Frost. Uh, since I've gotten it like a year, within a year of having this, I've gone back and searched out the artist. Red Vinyl. Great concept, or excuse me, compilation album. Poppies. Next question, please. An album that tells a story. Um, I didn't know. Tell a story about an album we got. An album that tells a story. That could have been The Wall. It tells a story. Uh, here's a story about this album and how I came to get it. I may have told this story. I don't know. But there's an auction company called JD's Auction. It's jdsauction.com. Um, their headquarters is in Clinton, Tennessee, around the corner from uh, where the antique shop is, where I, where I hang out, where I have a booth. Um, and they had purchased a building. It was an old, had been a department store, it had been like a comic books and record shop. It had been several things over the years. There was a lot of content left. And this was in there. And I went in there because they were in there. I wasn't breaking in. And they were just cleaning up, throwing trash away and putting stuff in piles that could be auctioned off because they owned it now. And they were just trying to recoup some of their money from the building. And I found this. And Brian and Ryan, two of the guys that worked for JD, were there. And they talked about it. And they gave me, this is a OG copy. The Grateful Dead, and um, they know I love the dead. And uh, it was just really cool of those guys to lay it on me and let me have it, man. So, thank you. JD's Auction. Um, you can find records at their auction. Anything that people were auctioning off inside their estate, basically. And they do ship, so check them out. JD'sAuction.com Okay. An album that needs a pressing, a, a vinyl pressing. I'm going with Nathan East. Love this dude. This brother is a badass bass player. Arguably one of the ba best bass players alive. Him and Victor Wooten, I think, are the two best bass players alive today. Um, he's played with Herbie Hancock, Phil Collins. He was part of the Eric Clapton band. And he very well could have perished in that... Uh, Plane crash back in the day that Clapton lost a couple members of the band. He was supposed to be on that plane. 
and he wasn't. Thank God he wasn't. A fine album. To my knowledge, it's never been on vinyl. It's his only solo album. And he does some really great renditions of songs here. He does Moon Dance. He does Yesterday by the Beatles. And his little six or seven year old boy plays piano on Yesterday and does a hell of a good job. I wish this would come out on vinyl. Mr. Nathan East, one of my favorite bass players. So just a great, great CD. We need it on album. Come on, Nathan, please put it out for us. A common album and a uncommon EP. I know I pulled these billies. Maybe I didn't. I had to. Okay, hold on, guys. Aha, aha, aha. Very common album, maybe the most common album ever. Michael Jackson's Thriller. Nothing to be said. The King of Pop. Very common. And an uncommon EP. And this is a one sided EP from the Bad Brains. And this could be used for another question if I wanted to. Look at that, man. It's got the very cool album, EP. The Bad Brains, some hardcore. They mix reggae and punk and hardcore. And uh, Bad Brains are badass. There's no doubt about it. Love this band. Love this band. Love this band. Have since I was in like ninth grade. Okay, let's see what else we got going on, guys. A girl group. Well, I wanted to show The Runaways, but I don't have any of their albums. So I'm going with Dana Ross and the Supremes. These beautiful young ladies made some of the great music of the 60s back then. I mean, they were wonderful. Dana Ross and the Supremes. I need a better pressing of this. I'll get one some Good album. Um... A album cover you love. And this is going to be um, on one of the last questions I'm going to talk about this artist, Steve Earle. I love his concept of album covers. He started these in the mid-90s um, with I Feel All Right. Instead of just doing pictures of himself and shit. Really cool concept. Uh, just pictures. A lot of them tell the stories of the songs on the album. I love his album covers of the last 25 years. All of them have been really, really cool. So, here's another one by the man. Love those album covers. Oh, an album that you've listened to the most. Now, that could be anything. Because I've listened to a lot. I'm going to high school. I'm going to 12th grade. This is an album I listened to the most in 12th grade. Out of Washington, D.C. Minor Threat on Discord Records. Discord Records. O.D. and McKay. The Body Himself. Straight Edge. Hardcore. I was not, I was far, far, far from straight edge. I was the furthest thing away from that, but that was really good music, and I loved Minor Threat. And I lost my bottle of water. Um, next question. An OG copy of an album you had to have. Well, I don't search out OG copies just to have an OG. I want a good pressing, a good sounding pressing. Um, this happens to be an OG copy, and I just lucked into it. Pink Floyd, The Wall. This copy, it was almost all the way sealed when I bought it. I did. I showed it over the summer. They had slid it open enough just to get the albums in and out, but they had never taken the shrink off, and it was OG. But I didn't search out an OG copy of it. I lucked into it, and I got it for a good deal that day. The last album that you purchased. I was at Wild Honey Records in Oak Ridge. 
Wild Honey Records. They used to be in Knoxville and Oak Ridge. He closed down his Knoxville location temporarily. Um, hopefully he'll get that back up and running. Right now they're in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And these are the last two, actually, the last three albums I bought. I made a trip out there. Uh, fantastic jazz, man. Art Blakely. I got one of his albums from the Blue Note series and fell in love with it and went out and picked two more up. Mark Blakely, great drummer. Oh my God. Anyway, those are the last ones I purchased. Ugh. A punk album or the closest thing to it? Well, I showed Minor Threat and that was a punk album. Um, Flem. Punk, straight up hardcore punk from the suburbs of DC. Uh, featured the lead singer Barry McAvoy, who went on to be an uh, actor and a, uh, a comedy writer. He now lives in Ireland. He does plays. So he's very active with his acting career. But uh, Flem. <laughs> Flem, wow. Um, is what I'm going for on that one. And uh, an album you're looking forward to coming out in 2021 20, is going to be um, JT is the name of the album. And it's by Steve Earle. And it's one of these. This one's called Guy. He's also done one called Towns. And they're tribute albums to his musical heroes. And unfortunately, in 2020, Steve Earle lost his son, Justin Towns Earl. And in March of this year, March of 2021, he's coming out with an album called JT. And it's a tribute to his son. Just like Guy Clark, he redid all you know the songs on this as a tribute. Towns, he did the same thing. And it's an album he never wanted to make. I mean, my God, who would, who would want to go through that? But sadly, he lost his son, Towns. And uh, he's coming out with an album in just a couple months, a tribute to his son. So I'm really looking forward to uh, that album. I've enjoyed all these I've watched, man. I saw Andrews pop his up. The day he popped it up, I, I watched it. I was like, wow, this is really cool. Then I've seen Randy Weaver's Vinyl Ritchie. I just watched his this evening. He did a hilarious one, man. I love watching Vinyl Ritchie. Um... Throw some shout-outs to some great people. You know who you are. Guys like 1441. Can you see the sticker? No. 1441, a great VC channel. Um, there are tons. There is George Allen, who's a new channel that really needs support. Check him out. I want to thank channels like Mr. Hall of Fame, Brandon. Um, he always comments back when you comment on his videos. He's been very helpful. I've reached out to him and asked him questions before when I was just getting started. Channel 33, Frank, thank you for your help and all your support over the last couple of years. Dylan at Noble Records is another one. Dylan the Record Spinner, Melinda Murphy, all you guys rock. It feels like a great big group of friends just kind of hanging out and we've never met each other. Actually, I met a couple people. I met Randall Reaver. That was kind of cool hanging in Nashville. Maybe one day we could all do a great big VC get together, man, in a, a state that we all could agree on and just hang out and talk about music. And Well, guys, peace. I hope you have a safe one.